Hey, welcome to the guide. I'm Yo. My name is Will. Nice yeah. to be here with you today. That's nice to be here with you today. Oh, I think. Fine Friday that it is, and uh, we are going to be talking about the biggest release of the year, I think. I, I really think it's going to be the biggest release of the year. Harry Potter I agree. and Deathly Hollows Part 2. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, first, we had a chance to uh, play some 3DS games and uh, put the 3DS through its paces a little bit more. Uh, you had a chance to try out Street Fighter 4. Hey. Uh, and what'd you think? Uh, Super Street Fighter 4 on the 3DS was... It was cool. So many options, like oh, man, move combos. Oh, man, a fully featured game. It's crazy. Blown away by the capacity that what they've turned just a simple fighting game into. Mm -hmm. It's so cool. Cool use of the 3D. The thing that kind of bugged me is all the videos and cutscenes in between oh, the yeah. fights, none of that was in 3D. Right. Which I don't understand. Why would you make a special 3D edition game unless you know, the whole thing it's really 3D. used the 3D? Yeah. I thought the uh, 3D, when you put it in like the dynamic camera angle, where it, it's hard to describe, but put everything basically at like a catty corner angle. Right. And it made good use of the 3D that way. But I had a hard time controlling things because, like, when I wanted to go forward, because I was looking into the screen, I'd push up instead, and so my yeah. character was just jumping in place <laughs> instead of going forward to attack. There's 35 characters uh, wow. that they bring out in this game. A, a lot of them are like, who, wait, who's that right. again? But um, I think they did a good job at creating diversity in the game and the fighting sequences. Uh, there's partic particular characters that are matched up against other characters, mm -hmm. so if you do your research, then uh, you can really get involved with Street Fighter. But it's also easy to enjoy it if you're not a, a particular fighter gamer, because they have the, uh, the light version of the controls, mm -hmm. they do light or pro, uh, so you can have on your touch screen some just direct combos that you don't have to memorize. I make use of those a lot. Me. Two. <laughs> yeah. So what would you give Street Fighter uh, out of seven? Seven, of course, being perfect. Mm, I'd give it a five out of seven. Really? As okay. far as a fighting game. It was right. uh, definitely up there. Um, a little past Mortal Kombat for me. Yeah. Uh, moving on to Steel Diver, a game developed by Nintendo, one of the release titles for the Nintendo 3DS, and uh, I had a chance to play that. You know what? I thought it was fun. I don't think it was a good launch title. I don't think it's a good... Uh, full priced game. It really felt more like a downloadable title. Yeah, when I was playing it with you, I was like, oh, cool, a digital battleship. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, there's a there's three options in there. You can do missions where you guide your, your sub using the touch screen, which are fun and engaging. Yeah. There's a periscope uh, uh, mini game where basically you hold up the DS and you have to use the gyroscope to look around, and that's always entertaining to see people you know, <laughs> yeah. spinning around and playing. Oh! trying to shoot things and then you have the little mini strategy game which is like battleship so three fun little mini games that you can play but they are basically mini games um, right. and they're enjoyable and I had fun with them but to pay full price for a game like that it seems a little wrong uh, definitely more of a downloadable title no points to the 3D in this game I don't know why it was a launch title I mean when you put it in 3D it looks pretty but it adds absolutely nothing to the game yeah it wasn't like pilot wings where I wanted to play it in 3D most of the time with Steel Diver, I left it off just yeah. because it didn't add anything, and, and why bother? Especially when you're doing the gyroscope stuff, it's hard to. Well, you have to maintain the, that line of sight, yeah. and then if you get off, then yeah. So Steel Diver, it's fun. Don't pay full price. If you find a bargain price, that would be the ideal way to go. Or rent it like we did through GameFly. It's not worth full price, but it is a fun game, and the download and play that you can do with it is a lot of fun to play with friends. So yeah, I, I would give it. Um, I would give it five out of seven as a game. Really. Four out of seven for its value as a game, because <laughs> as a full price retail game, it's right. just not worth it. But it is fun, so it, it's kind of hard to uh, go back and forth on that. And then finally, of course, let's talk about um, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows Part 2, which uh, released this week, finally bringing the Harry Potter saga to an end. Now, are you uh, have you are you well kept with the Harry Potter saga, reading the books along with the movies? I have read the books uh, mostly just so I could intelligently discuss them with all the controversy that went on, and then because I read the books, I followed the movies as well. And you know, by this point, people have made up their mind whether or not they're going to go see Harry Potter. This You've made up your mind about it. You know what you think about Harry Potter. I'm not here to tell you to go see the movie or not go see the movie. I'm just to tell you, uh, was it a well-made movie? Yes, yes it was. I mean, it was a really well-made movie. It was beautifully shot. The, the musical score is very haunting and powerful. Lots of emotional scenes. 
It plays like a war movie, so it's really kind of dark and gritty and grisly, yeah. but not graphic, but man, it packs a powerful punch. I mean, these are dark times. And I, I kind of like that though, because it shows that for good to overcome evil, it, it costs something. Right. And yeah. it, it's a struggle. It's not easy. And the movie definitely portrays that. And also portrays some interesting things with Harry Potter setting him up, I would say, as a Christ like figure in the way that he sacrifices. Um, and it has a great theme about love. You know, it, it almost suggests that love is the deeper magic of the Harry Potter world. Really? It's a deeper magic that not even Voldemort can master. Ooh. It's the deeper magic that truly helps good overcome evil. And, you know, you know, Jesus talked about that. Greater yeah. love has no one than he who lays down his life for his friends. Yeah. Her Harry goes through with that, uh, just as Christ did. And that is what ultimately helps him overcome evil. So, you know, there's some very interesting themes that play out. As far as a conclusion to a decades-long film yeah. franchise, yeah. they did a good job. I think it was a satisfying clue. That's so hard to do. Yeah, especially with a series like this that is so developed already with the whole so book fans. fans. You have yeah. book fans, you have movie fans, you have yeah. new fans, you have old fans. I think they did a good job um, bringing it to a satisfying conclusion. It's a well-made movie that packs a, an emotional punch. And even if you're someone like me who really doesn't have an idea what's really going on with the Harry Potter trilogy, they make the movies uh, appeal enough just to the, hey, that looks kind of cool. That looks a little action-packed, you know? So I want to see it myself, not for the fact that, like, oh, I want to see if they uh, followed this line right, chapter right. in the book. I just want to be entertained, and it looks like a movie that can do that. Well, it is a touchstone, I think, of our culture. It's been around for a decade now, and yeah. I think a lot of people want to go see it just because, like, oh, it's the final one. I want to see how it ends. It's like how people tune into the final episode of a, of <laughs> right, a TV series. Yeah. It doesn't matter if they watched it. They just want to see the final, because it's a little piece of media history, whatever. Uh, I would give Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows a 6 out of 7 because it's so hard to do a satisfactory conclusion to an epic series like this. It's a well-made film on technical merits and what you feel about it, you know, so far as the spiritual content, that's a discussion for another time. It's a well-made movie. Definitely. It does justice to the series. It does justice to the books. It satisfies fans. That's not an easy accomplishment. It's a dark movie. It is pretty gritty. It's not like something you want to take your kids to. Although at my screening, I was surprised that at the cross-section of people. Young, old, women, men. Yeah. I mean, it showed me, it reminded me while I'm sitting in that theater and there's everybody there it, yeah. that it's a series that has appealed to everyone. So we got the full written review there at GameAndMovieGuide.com and if you want to discuss this. Yeah, we'll be uh, hosting, I'm sure, plenty of discussion about sure. the whole Harry Potter thing <laughs> on our Facebook. If you go to Facebook.com forward slash GameAndMovieGuide. Yes, so leave your comments there and what you think about the final Harry Potter and we'll talk about that. And uh, that's going to wrap things up for the guide. You can also read more, HollywoodJesus.com if you want more views on the final Harry Potter and share some thoughts about that. And then next week, another epic movie, yes. the one you're excited this for. This has been my summer blockbuster that I've been anticipating, Captain America. Yeah. So we're going to see if it follows through or if it falls through the cracks like the rest of the superhero movies. And we'll tell you whether or not uh, training as a UFC fighter is paying off for me as we talk about the new Connect. Um, physically get fit game thing. I thought, UFC fighter. I thought you'd been looking a little bit more defined lately. Yeah. We'll see you next week on The Guide.